Good morning. Um, today I'm going to be talking to you about you see, a piece of work entitled What Works? Improving Outcomes for Children with a Parent in Prison. This piece of work uh, was a different type of question, required a different approach and subsequently is a different type of publication than the two projects that have been presented to you so far. This piece of work sits in the Translate to Disseminate uh, section of the Knowledge to Action cycle. I needed to quickly take the best available evidence, translate it in a way that was accessible to the customer who is definitively policy makers in this space and get it out to be used. A key thing to bear in mind for this topic is that policy decisions were going to be made anyway and we had to fit into their time frames. Because of course we want these decisions to be based on evidence. Oh. So this is a very quick snapshot of sort of the, the state of play of this topic in, in New Zealand and where I got to in this uh, piece of work. So as I said, the, the driver is the, the policy need. Vulnerable children are a key focus for government as evidenced by the green and white papers for vulnerable children and the whole of government action plan to reduce the harms caused by adult gangs. Children of prisoners are a significant population group of vulnerable children. And you can see there's some overlap there with children of gang members, which Supura has also produced a report on. So who are these children of prisoners? The estimated 20,000 uh, children have a parent in prison at any time. Uh, almost all of those are fathers. And we're not just talking about fathers who are actively engaged in the household or, or within the lives of their children. Uh, corrections uh, estimate that only 15% of fathers were living with their children before they went into prison. Um, we'll talk about the, the importance of that later. What are some other key characteristics? Uh, Māori children are likely to be overrepresented in this population. Māori make up 50% of the prison population, despite only being 14% of the, the national population. Um, and they're exposed to multiple risks. The academic research in the area provides some very compelling evidence from very strong longitudinal studies about the high risk of poor outcomes for these kids. The poor social outcomes, educational attainment, poor mental and physical health, and all these feed into the very high risk of intergenerational imprisonment. There's also some strong evidence from overseas intervention programs that are really shown to be really effective for children generally at risk and are likely to be effective for this subpopulation. In New Zealand, as a, being part of the broader group of children exposed to many risks, children with a parent in prison will be, will be receiving some you know, very effective and new local intervention services. And there are some, there's a small uh, amount of work being done specifically for their needs by Pillars, who are the main NGO in this sector, and they collaborate with uh, Department of Corrections who have some good practices, including the out-of-gate um, body of work. And most importantly, perhaps for this talk, is Supuru's role is we're trying to integrate knowledge and facilitate and inform dialogue between these domains. So this What Works report, as I said, capitalised on the current policy interest and in growing evidence in this area and aims to use this existing evidence to inform policy decisions in a timely manner. 
It's alright, it's very tricky. Where are we up to? Okay, cool. Um, so we highlighted what we know about the impacts of parental imprisonment, what interventions may improve their outcomes, and where the knowledge gaps exist. And the take home messages I'd like to impart from this piece of work are that we know that these children are exposed to multiple complex, multi domain risk factors. However, parental imprisonment is an additional risk factor on top of these already existing issues within the family. And parental imprisonment can serve as a, a marker, a readily identification point for these kids. Okay, we'll just have to uh, wing this bit. Okay. Thanks. And these multiple risk factors are well documented. We, we know what they are. They're consistent across countries and in different places over time. They are consistent across generations and are intergenerational. So going back to the, what Richie Poulton was saying in, the, in regard to the Dunedin Longitudinal Study, um, early intervention is going to be most effective if we want to shift the life course outcomes of these kids. So given what we know, yes, there is a need for New Zealand-specific evidence on what the drivers of these outcomes are, and what the, you know, the, uh, the New Zealand's situation is. However, that should not be the focus. The focus should be uh, what will work, what the effective interventions in our context, especially for Māori. This is not the end of the story. Superu has a, play, a role to play in continuing the knowledge to action cycle and excitingly for me, potentially creating more evidence in this space. Thank you. <laughs>